Hi, and welcome to another three string cigar box guitar lesson. Um, I'm Sean from Coda Guitar, and uh, we're looking at using some uh, chords again here. So, playing in a particularly sort of soul, soul y style. Um, so, this ties in nicely with uh, the lesson we did uh, previously, or lessons on um, like major uh, chords in major keys and also um, major scale. Uh, lessons. So uh, please check those out on our channel. Um, it'll give you a little bit more um, information about all of that. But before we carry on, let's just check we're in tune. So we've got a G, low string, middle string, D, and high string, G. Okay. So um, they combine, as we've explained previously, to form a, a G power chord. Um, so uh, if we want to turn that into a major um, chord, then we'll go for fret 4 on the top string. So it gives us a major sounding chord there. And um, I can uh, go for like the middle string as well uh, on fret 5, and that's, that's also, also a, a G chord. Um, uh, it doesn't sound much different, but maybe if I was putting some of those little sort of grace note embellishments in um, it works quite nicely to slide both of them up but I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit so uh, I was using that as the G for, for, for quite a lot of it um, the second chord uh, was an E minor now I'm just going to go through the the open position chords to start with which means that we've got at least one open string in the shape so the next one is going to be D, and so this is fret 2 on the, the, the two G strings with an open D in the middle. Okay, um, there, there are potentially sort of nicer sounding um, D shapes in this one, but it's just that we can use an open string, so it means that your hand doesn't get too tired out if you're constantly like barring, basically, which I'll, I'll cover in a minute. Um, so there's a D. Next one's an E minor, so I've got fret 2 on the middle string and fret 4 on uh, the low G, and I've got open G, um, top string ringing through. So there's an E minor. And then very closely related shape, so the C, just literally step up from fret 4 to fret 5 there. So there's a C on open 2, 5, there's a C chord. We've got G, we've got D, we've got E minor, we've got C. Um, so I was playing it in a quite sort of gentle, solely kind of way, but um, this, this chord progression gets used in um, a whole bunch of different songs, uh, anything from like Bob Marley, No Woman No Cry, um, Tell Me Life, Green Day, uh, Blink 182, lo loads of songs, you know, um, the majority of styles that you can think of, to be honest. Uh, it's really, really good um, chord progression to get used to. Um, technique wise, um, with these chords, because um, we've got some notes, say for example with this first one, where I've got um, this note here, which is a fret lower than this one, I can easily catch string three if I'm not careful with my third finger. So I've got to make sure that I'm bridging round. Uh, again, there's go into this in a bit more detail in the uh, the major chord lesson, <coughs> but um, make sure you bridge them round. And um, particularly for this D chord, you see I'm having to change my hand position quite dramatically there. That's uh, that's that's coming round from the side. If you see whereabouts my thumb is, so. I'm trying to get a, a bridge so I'm not catching the middle string probably is the, the, the most obvious one that's going to be a problem with my first finger. Okay, And then for this minor, E minor, I can easily catch string one if I'm not careful, like underneath uh, finger one. So I've got a bridge round and then a bit of a stretch that one. Okay, um, That's the C to finish off, but hopefully if you can get the E minor on, um, you've just got to get used to bridging with your little finger as well. So, uh, as I've mentioned in various other videos, depending on what the action, the, the height of the strings off your fretboard's like, um, some of these might feel quite quite tricky. Um, so this this is sort of reasonably high because of uh, slide playing. So um, yeah, I can I can kind of feel it when I've been playing for a bit. Um, okay, so they they are um, the four sort of open um, chord shapes. 
Now, just so you can kind of see how they fit together, um, there was uh, the lesson on looking at notes in a major key or a major scale. So that's like the key, key of G, this, because we're basically tuned to a, a G power chord. Um, and, and each of those can become a chord. Uh, we get a funny one when, when we get to the, 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 the seventh. But essentially they're all like power, power chords. Um, ignore the, the, the seventh note, the, um, the F sharp, that doesn't get used very often. So um, what we were doing there is we were just selecting four. So those first six, so G, A, B, C, D, E. Those first six are like the strongest ones. They, they get used loads in, in uh, songs, in chord progressions. But um, we're just selecting four of those. We're using G, we're using D, which would be fret seven. We're using E, which would be fret 9, and we're using C, which would be fret 5. Okay, so in terms of barring, again, more detail on uh, the, the major chord lesson. So, see, my thumb is uh, pinching sort of directly behind my, um, you see that, I'm sort of pinching onto this middle portion, but please check out that lesson for more detailed sort of demo and description of that. Um, because uh, yeah, it can feel re if you if you're not kind of using your hand efficiently, um, you, you can run out of stamina really quickly. You can feel like an absolute nightmare. Um, so just moving that bar around, you know, it's giving you a, a nice um, sort of melodic chord sound. Um, so what's actually happening? That they're, they're all neutral chords. Those those power chords. Um, but they wouldn't all be like, for example, major chords uh, if we if we turned them all into um, three note chords because a power chord's only got two notes in G, D, G, for example. Um, it would actually be uh, G major, which we've already done, and then the D would actually be a major, which would be right up on uh, so bar on fret seven, and then little finger right up on fret eleven. Okay, a um, bit of a stretch there, and then the E is a minor. So I'm moving up to fret 9, but I'm only on fret 12 here. So basically the, the these are quite sort of stretchy shapes, but with the bar on fret 7, it's four frets higher to a major chord which is why you push down on fret 4 from the open strings if you were going to bar which you wouldn't then your little finger would be up there so it's the same shape so fret 7 up to fret 11 but then for the um, the, the E minor uh, that's only three frets higher okay but then when we go to the C so that was fret 7 and 12 when we go to the C which is fret 5 it needs to be a major, unfortunately, so this is a, a, a bit of a stretch because the, the frets are gradually getting wider apart as we get closer to the headstock. Uh, so this is now fret 9. So you might find that a little bit of a stretch. There's, there's, uh, there are things that we can do uh, if these um, actual just standard chord shapes are, are a little bit awkward. There, there are ways that we can... Um, pick out notes from the actual scale um, and add those in instead as, as little grace notes, um, which I'll go over in a minute. But if you were going to do all of this as like um, bar chords, so I'll start with a G here again, or we can even go for a G power chord there. And then I'll go for, so that's fret 7 and 5, 5, 7. There's my D. Here's my E minor, there's my C. Mix it up, because it was just the same sequence all the way through. They sound quite different. Same chords, but like um, different different positions, what we call different inversions. Um, G, G, a D, sorry, E minor, C. Go for a power chord this time, just for a bit of variation. There's a D, 
E minor, C. So that's starting to sound quite varied. Um, what can I do to add more variations? I mean, I, I would definitely go go around all of that and um, get get used to that to start with. Uh, and um, I was I was making each chord last for two beats each. So it's like one, two, three, four. So uh, definitely go, go around but both of those versions um, on their own to start with and um, uh, nothing particularly that defined with the right hand, with the picking hand. Um, you, you can decide which string to select with your thumb. Um, so I'm sometimes actually selecting the middle string because on these ones, the, um, apart from the C, uh, we, we could say that the bass um, of the chord could be on the middle string. Then there's the D, there's the E minor, and the C bass comes onto this string here. Um, but um, you, you, you get quite a very soulful sound if you do like a chop, uh, a chord sort of chop, like a louder strum you know so you're working with like the dynamics not making everything exactly the same level all the way through one two three four one two three four so i'll, I'll go around some of those passing notes in a, a short while um so uh go around that go around the the, the, the bar chord um variation and then uh because we're in the key of G, what we can do is we can look at different ways that we can play the same chord, just kind of working up and down the neck. So that's going to give us some nice um, potential movement places where we can move to. Um, so here's the, the first one on frets five and four to start with. Uh, and then from there, I can go like the power chord shape frets five and seven and then sort of flip it back round I'm on nine and seven so that's sounding very similar it's still basically the same chord just a slightly higher version just stacking the notes differently on top of each other and then finally we can go to fret nine and twelve I can even start down here if I wanted I can slide into them. Doing the, the chop on the second beat each time. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. Um, and uh, the, there's, uh, there's what, one more place where we could play the C. So we've got the C here. Um, we can play it up here as well. So that's on fret 9, 10, and 12. Okay. And then uh, for the E minor, uh, instead of always going up to doing a full bar and always going up to fret 12 with the highest note. Uh, I can I can actually play what's called a, a seventh shape. So that's frets nine on the bottom two strings and seven on the high G. Again, watch your watch your bridge there. Okay. Um, but m most of the other variation was actually. Uh, just looking at which which extra notes, sort of scale tones, really note, notes from the scale that I can add in on on any of the chords. So um, there's a D, there's a D, and if that's a bit of a stretch, I can 
just faff around on uh, fret 9 because that's bar and fret 7 so I can just uh, do some little like grace note hammer-ons or you don't even need to do that you can Add, add them in on, on the top two strings, the, the high G and the D strings. Um, on the E minor, I can drop down like that. I can also do that on the D as well. I can, even, I can do it on the C as well. Um, but uh, when, when you're kind of improvising in this way, you don't necessarily want to do um, repeat the same little trick um, in, in sequence. You just want to mix it up a bit. So say if I went for a, um, a D and I did that little descending bit. If I went to a E7, E minor 7 shape as opposed to the that one. Uh, then I can do the same descending trick on the C, so I can go go back to the G there. And um, you can do that low uh, descending run. So that's uh, just using the uh, descending from fret five down to the, the root. Um, so that, that again, very sort of classic soul type sound. Um, and and it's just a question of uh, it takes a little bit of time because it, it it's quite difficult like improvising with um, chords um, because uh, the, the there's. It, it's easier to just stick in a scale and um, and and just sort of work your way around. You know, because because it's all all kind of um, you can think of it as being sort of droning off one um, one note, or even if the chords are changing underneath. Um, if we're letting another musician um, change chord, then um, we're, we're, we're just focusing on playing the scale. But when you're actually sort of carrying the, the chord sequence yourself and putting variation in, uh, it's much more like restrictive. You, you, you can't be as free with just like playing whatever you want within that scale. You, you've, you've got to be confined to those particular chords and change at the right time um, so it, it's a question of finding you know sort of two or three places where you can um, play those chords in the same sequence and, and so you can just add variation um, so I, I started down here and I, I played it a couple of times uh, it was very similar uh, the, the second time I think um, but I just maybe just added you know, some slight, slight variation, but then straight away after that, um, I might have gone up there. I can't remember. It was either there or to the, the power chord. So that's still a G, but this time I'm I'm, I'm going to pick out some of these higher positions. So I'm, I'm going to move myself up on the G. So so there. I didn't actually do any of the, the, the high or awful sort of stretchy full D or C shapes. I, I put like a little grace note thing on where it was uh, just hammering on onto the top string two frets higher. And then instead of going up to the minor, uh, the, the full E minor, I went to the, the seven instead. That works quite nicely because that note there, this one fret seven, that's kind of becomes a little common note between the E minor and the C, you know, so you just sort of tie things in a bit. Um, and uh, you can do other little tricks like, uh, so again, this is covered in more detail in the other major chords lesson, but um, we, we, we can do like a little descending sort of double stop thing. It's in, in, very similar to but using uh, two notes. Okay. So, just putting some of those ideas together. 
So we'll start low, go. for a bit so it sounds nice and varied you know so once you get used to it you can start to look at how how you can um, what what other options um, you, you you've got um, stemming from so if, if I've got to play the D then um, as a bar I'm not going to move off that and so what what notes have I got from there use your ears you know you, it doesn't you don't have to be a theory master or anything whoops it needs to be a major no it's actually quite a lot of notes there um, can be quite difficult um, sort of keeping the bar on and then bridging round so that you say add in an extra note in on the middle string uh, you, you might actually find it easier because you can get away with being a bit flatter you might find it e easier to, to, to add the extra note in on the, the, the high string but um, yeah so again uh, it's not blues, but it's um, related um, in a way. And uh, you can uh, say um, you do sometimes have a, a minor chord thrown into to a blues, actually. Um, so I, I don't know if you noticed, but we had the G, uh, the C and the D uh, in this, which were taken from uh, like a standard 12 bar blues. But you do occasionally get the E minor thrown in as well. So there's like a old uh, Robert Johnson song, which has been covered by loads of people. Uh, Eric Clapton, I think, Rolling Stones, people like that, and uh, called Love in Vain, and um, that uh, that throws in the, the the E minor, so it's like you you you're on um, G, and then and then when you get to the D, the E minor to C. So it, it just gives it a slightly sweeter sound um, where if, if you throw the minor in or I could do it low down here. Um, uh, I'll change to C now. Then G. Then D. So again, um, there's there's some uh, relation there between you know sort of soul and blues kind of vibes. Um, so yeah, uh, have fun with that, and uh, please check out the other videos on the channel. I think you'll find them quite useful to sort of tie in with this to give you uh, better sort of technical um, exercises and, and help help particularly get you picking and um, you know your sort of chord fretting down, and also uh, maybe some sort of general knowledge of um, you know. And unlocking the fretboard a bit, um, depending on if you want to play in like a major or a minor or even in a more sort of bluesy, mixed up kind of way. Uh, so hope that was uh, useful and we'll see you here again soon on Coda Guitar.